Hi, I'm Dr. John Ross, President and Founder of Maintenance Innovators Incorporated, and I'm very happy to be coming to you today from World Headquarters for Noria Corporation right here in my hometown of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Today I'm going to speak briefly uh, with you about criticality analysis. And before I get into that, I want to talk about uh, another term, asset criticality analysis, and draw a distinction. In asset criticality analysis, what we're likely to do is sit down in a cross-functional team with our associates, and we're going to determine what assets in order of priority are the most critical in our plant. Uh, like me, I hope that you would determine that your most critical assets in your facility are probably around power distribution, compressed air, city water, maybe wastewater, you know, the utilities of an organization. Those are typically the most critical. If you give those a weight of 10 and everything else is a 9 through 1, then we can get into the production equipment. But making that list of assets, you know, what are the assets we have, and then what order of criticality are those, those would, that would be something called asset criticality analysis. But in criticality analysis, it's a little bit different because now we're going to talk about a specific asset and what level of risk we find ourselves at. And risk is typically defined as probability of something happening times the consequence when it does happen. And I'm going to bring a term in here that's uh, called context of operation. And this is very important when you're talking about criticality analysis because the context in which we use an asset has everything to do with how critical it is. Let me give you an example. I live here in Tulsa and in Oklahoma. We don't have much snow, and I jokingly tell folks that the one snow plow we have is at the airport. That snow plow is very important in the winter and in the late fall. That snow plow is very important, but come March and April, not so much. Now we're talking about the lawn mowing equipment. Uh, so you can understand as far as criticality analysis, if we're in December, January, and February out at Tulsa International, the snowplow is very critical. But then again, in the spring and the summer, not so much. So three things I want to talk about criticality analysis. One, what is it actually? The other, what is the purpose of criticality analysis? Why would we even do this? And then secondly, how do you actually perform criticality analysis? Well, the first one I've answered, sort of touched on anyway, what is criticality analysis? After we've listed all of our assets, and this is very important because as a consultant, one of the things I do with my clients, first of all, can we agree what assets we have in the plant? For example, I'm in a facility, there's 7,500 assets. I need maintenance, engineering, production, procurement, HR, safety, food safety, if it's a safety plant or food plant. Can we agree we have 7,500 assets? There's three air compressors, one, two, three. There's 17 conveyors. There they are. If we cannot agree on that, we're not going to agree on anything. If we can agree on that, then can we also agree what the order of importance are of those? I've recently used the example, and again, I'm here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I've recently used the example, if you had to get out of your house in a set amount of time in a tornado, a fire, some other circumstance, what would you take with you? Now, let's say uh, children and, and spouse are given, but what material things would you take with you if you had to get out, you know, if you had 30 minutes? Well, most of us would take important documents, irreplaceable documents, a birth certificate, a passport, which is replaceable, but it's kind of hard to get one, a driver's license, maybe some financial records, you know, some uh, credit card, those kinds of things. Uh, maybe if you had time, you'd take baby pictures and maybe something that your mother left you or your father, some heirloom from your family, something important to you. What if you only had five minutes? Now the criticality, right? Uh, the context. Uh, you only got five minutes. What are you going to grab? You're going to grab your wallet and you're going to hit the door. Again, your children and your spouse are safe. So criticality analysis is us coming to some agreement. What are the assets? What are the order of propriety, if you will? And then we get into the risk association, the risk measurement, the probability that something is going to happen, and the consequence when it does happen. What our job in maintenance and reliability, you know, in fact, I'm just going to say what our job total, everybody in a leadership position in an organization, what our role becomes is to reduce risk. And we do that by reducing the probability, the likelihood, the chances of something happening. And if it were to happen, we reduce the consequence. In fact, reducing consequences is a cornerstone uh, theme of reliability-centered maintenance. So criticality analysis is, can we agree on what are the assets? Can we agree the order of propriety? 
And then can we agree on what the risk is in the context of operation? Is it summertime or wintertime, if you remember my snowplow? What is the, purp uh, the purpose of criticality analysis? Very simple, and it's probably uh, a purpose you hadn't thought about because we only have so much money to spend maintaining our assets. Let's say, for example, your maintenance organization or your reliability effort gets about, I don't know, four and a half million dollars a year uh, on all the assets, 7,500 assets, 17 maintenance people, a storeroom with three folks in it, and you got, what, $4.5 million. Where are you gonna spend that money? I would suggest, I would suggest that we spend the money on the critical assets. And again, if you go back to what I said before, if we can't determine what the critical assets are, we're gonna spend a lot of money on the coffee pot and the weed eater, right? How do you perform a criticality analysis? I've actually answered this and addressed it already too. You get a cross-functional group together, and here's my point. If we don't include, I'm talking maintenance now, we don't include engineering, storeroom, procurement, food safety, safety, HR, if we don't include these folks, they're gonna be the victim of whatever we come up with. And I'm gonna suggest we engage people because if we don't engage them and have them at the table where their voice matters and they have some input and they have some responsibility to provide that input, if we don't encourage them and invite them, they're gonna be the victim and we can't have victims, and not the, guys, not in the 21st century, we cannot have it. We perform a criticality analysis by bringing a representation from everybody who's interested in that machine being there. Let me end on this note. I want you to think about the important equipment in your plant, the snow plow. The, the hydraulic press, the, the oven that bakes the cookies or the bread or whatever it is that you make. That machine is literally printing the paychecks of the people in your facility. Don't you think everyone ought to be concerned about that and interested in that and have something to say about that? I, I certainly do think so. So uh, just a short conversation on criticality analysis. I hope this has been helpful. I look forward to talking to you sometime in the future. Thank you.